Mike McConville here one more time from Stratford, Ontario, Canada. I'm in my shop. I've got this Les Paul. Uh, I've just been through this so many times. Uh, I thought before I even pull the strings off this thing, I'm just going to point out five really common reasons why your Les Paul will not play in tune. Okay, so excuse the... <laughs> My shop, I've been building a pergola and doing a bunch of fences in the backyard and stuff for the last few weeks. Anyway, okay, so five common errors that people make. So let's go over here. Let's start first with this tailpiece. I'm kind of bringing this down so that you can see that the sixth string actually deflects off the casting in the back of the bridge. It's touching this casting in the back of the bridge. That's why you have an adjustable tailpiece. Bring up your tailpiece until, because of the curvature of the strings, it's always going to be the two outside strings that are the, that are the first to touch. Bring up those posts until the string clears the back of the casting of the bridge and goes directly from the tailpiece to the focal point on the saddle, unobstructed. Okay? The way these saddles are made, uh, when they're machined, there's just sort of like a a V nick put in each saddle, you know, to sort of line the strings up across the pole pieces. One of the problems with this is a lot of the time what you'll need to do is you'll need to open up the nick for the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth string because the string diameter is actually wider than the, the, the little nick that's put in the saddle for centering. You have to be very careful with this because you can't alter the height of the string. You want to just breeze through that very lightly and widen it without deepening it. Because unlike strats or uh, tellies where you can adjust each individual saddle up and down, with the Les Paul the, uh, and, or this type of bridge, the, the bridge is pre-engineered for the radius of the fingerboard. So you can't mess with that, just word of caution. Um, you see how close that string is? Like to, to determine the, the, the proximity of the string to the pickup, you need to play the last note on the guitar. That's as close as a string will ever get to the pickups. Uh, I know it's a common misconception that people say, well, I, you know, I want more sustain. I'm gonna bring my pickups up super close. Well, sorry, can't do it. Doesn't work that way. The magnetic field of the, of the pickup, uh, depending on the, the power of the magnets, but it can go up to three eighths of an inch so I'm not telling you the string's got to be three and eighths of an inch away, but you don't, at the closest point, you don't want to get any closer than an eighth of an inch. If you want a nice clean tone, if you get the strings too, or the pickups too close, they'll actually pull the string out of tune and you will see it on your tuner. When you go to tune your guitar and you see that needle kind of wobbling as you try and get it, as you hone it in, try dropping your pickups. You watch, that thing will come up straight up without any wobbling or, or, or uh, distortion uh, once you drop those pickups down uh, away from the magnetic field. These pickups here, or this pickup, sorry, the bridge pickup, yeah, that's, that's a little too far away. So that could be brought up a little bit closer. So when you hold the last note on the guitar, last fret, that's as close as you're going to get, you want to be at the bridge, you want to have it somewhere between an eighth of an inch, maybe 330 seconds. Again, if you get really powerful pickups, uh, your real, really powerful magnets, you might want to drop it down uh, away a little bit. I've had lots of times where people have come in, they couldn't tune their guitar, and all I did was drop the pickups down. So there you go. Another point, tuning. Okay. So... The lay of the neck. Okay, let's talk about the lay of the neck. Uh, on this one, I don't know if it's going to pick it up on the iPhone. There's a pretty good kind of ski jump in this one. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me see. Oh, yeah, you can see it. So, that's not a big deal. Everybody knows you adjust the truss rod and kind of straighten the neck. But what happens a lot of the time, and I've covered this in my other video, in that SG video, the neck-to-body junction where the neck is received into the body is a big heavy tenon and mortise. So it's not that this portion actually swells up or expands, it just doesn't budge. Everything else in relation to that, because the neck is carved away, it's quite flexible. So what you end up with, and I'm sure everybody will understand, uh, understand this when I say it, you end up with that sort of speed bump at the neck junction. 
So typically, people that are not prepared to do fret work, and incidentally, this is the total cash cow job for the tech deck. Um, people that are not really set up to do pret, fret dressing or fret leveling, uh, you know, I mean, they just don't know any better. So if your guitar is buzzing, uh, their solution is to hike up the strings until the buzzing goes away. The problem with this is, if you hike up the strings just to get rid of the buzzing, then what will happen is you will produce successively more tension on the string to bring it into contact with the fret as you ascend the fingerboard. So it's not just that it'll make your, your, your guitar horrible to play, like it'll feel terrible under the left hand or the fretting hand, but it'll also make it virtually impossible to tune because you're going to be exerting uh, various amounts of force along the uh, uh, along the length of the neck. So no matter what you do to the bridge to intonate, uh, you need to get the lay of the neck so that you exert the same amount of tension, whether you're playing at the third fret, the seventh fret, the twelfth fret, or the the twentieth fret. You should be exerting the same amount of force to bring the string into contact with the fret. Okay, so that's another tuning problem. It allows you to straighten the neck so that you can drop the strings down closer without having any buzzing problems. And what that does is, like I said a minute ago, it allows you to exert basically the same amount of force. So the, if the guitar is set up properly, it should feel the same whether you're playing at the 3rd fret, 7th fret, 12th fret. It should be virtually no difference in the feel for the left hand. Okay, next thing. You know, we talked about compensated nuts before. You can go on my blog and read about it in detail. But have you ever noticed how, you know, you can pick up a telly or a strat, right? And once it's, you know, once it's set up properly, even without a compensated nut, you can kind of strum GCD and you know, kind of get away with it. It's close. It's not perfect. It needs a compensated nut to be perfect. With a Les Paul, unless you put a compensated nut on, that's one of the jobs I'm doing on this one today, Unless you put a compensated nut on, all those first first position chords will be a mile out. You pick up, I, I challenge you to pick up any Les Paul you've ever played. Tune it, intonate your bridge, plug it into your tuner, make sure it's perfectly in tune and strum GCD. You tell me if that F sharp on the second fret of the first string, your garden variety D chord, tell me if that's in tune. Not a chance. Okay, so one of the things I'm going to be doing with this job is I'm going to be removing the nut on this Les Paul. Now, this is definitely more of a challenge on a Gibson Les Paul than it is on, say, an Epiphone Les Paul or copies of Les Pauls because when they do the finish, the actual finish goes just over the tip of the nut along the bottom. So you need to score with a razor knife the end of the nut where the lacquer overlaps so that you, that little flap comes off when you get the nut out without any danger of chipping off any of the color or finish. So it's, it's a pretty involved job. Anyway, so I will be removing the nut on this and, uh, and putting a compensated nut. They're the five sort of most common issues uh, around getting your Les Paul to behave and play perfectly in tune. You should be able to do a classical concerto on the thing if it's perfectly in tune. That's it for now. That's another F sharp. See?